Hello, my name is Andy Brown, and I'm an Apple MainStage nerd. Uh, About nine years ago, I made a video about how to use Apple MainStage in a musical theater context. It's got over 100,000 views, and it continues to get traffic, and I guess I answered some questions that people had, and I was surprised uh, that I had something to offer the internet. It's been about nine years, so I think it's time for a follow-up video, so I'm going to show you how I use Apple MainStage today as a music director and keyboardist for a 10-piece funk band. We're a fairly busy regional band, did like 25 shows last year. And because the band is so large and we have so many shows, we have a hard time getting all of our schedules to align. Uh, We use Mainstage as a way to keep us all together when we might have one or two or three subs per show. Mainstage helps us stay together musically, walks us through some of our custom arrangements during the show, and helps fill out some of the backing tracks and other instruments that we might not have on stage that help nail the performance and nail the arrangement. You know, a lot of churches do this on Sunday mornings. There's a lot of sites out there that provide worship music uh, for this kind of thing, but I'm going to show you how uh, we are taking pop tunes, funk tunes, and finding the tracks for those and bringing those into main stage. So let's get started. There's quite a few sites out there that have split tracks, isolated tracks for various songs. Our band is getting ready to do Valerie by Amy Winehouse. Uh, We've got some horn charts already for that. There's a lot that's going on in the arrangement that we would like to also cover. So I'm going to look for backing tracks for that. A lot of these sites um, seem to all have the same arrangement. I've had pretty good luck with karaoke versions, so I'm going to kind of walk you through this one here. I'm already signed in. I've already purchased uh, this track. If we listen to how this sounds with everything together... Yeah, that's a pretty good sounding karaoke version of that with all these different split tracks I can take off of here. Our band has got a rhythm section plus four horns and a couple of singers. But I really like what this is doing with the strings, uh, with the the bells, the marimba, all these things that kind of give it this classic Motown feel. All right, so first thing I'm going to download is just the click because we're going to need that to, to map the tempo of the song. These songs aren't always recorded with a click, so sometimes the tempo is a little variable. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to download a demo of everything just so we've got a reference while we're here. Okay, and the last thing I'm going to do is we're going to download just the backing tracks that we want to keep. So I don't need drums or bass or a guitar or the keys or the brass, or the lead vocals. All right, we're going to download that. Okay, then we're going to fire up Logic. I'm going to make a new project in Logic. We're going to drag into Logic these three tracks that we just created. Into bar one, and we're going to let it create new tracks for each file. Which is great. And we're going to go ahead and name these just so I can keep them straight. So that's the click. Uh, This looks like the backing track. And this one looks like the demo track because it looks like it's got music throughout. So now we are going to let Logic analyze the tempo that this is recorded at. So we're going to right click and go to Tempo, Create Smart Tempo Multi-Track Set. And the reason we download the click is because this is the safest thing for us to analyze for tempo. Um, Logic does a pretty good job with whatever you feed it of picking out the tempo, but it's not perfect. But by downloading the click, and most of these karaoke type sites provide a click for this purpose. So I'm going to tell it to only use that for analysis. So I'm going to analyze this. And now let's look at our smart tempo editor. So we click edit, open smart tempo editor. And it's a couple of views on here. I want to put this on uh, this view here so I can see where the bars are at. 
Now let's play it and let's pay attention to the bar and the beat up here. You can ignore this one up here because Logic doesn't know what the tempo is yet. Um, we're just analyzing it right now. Yeah, so first of all, I can see it's got the downbeat in the wrong place. So the downbeat should be here. I'm going to click that up there to reset that. Yeah, this looks pretty good. Um, let me scan forward to the end of the songs. Just make sure it's still on. We go over there. Yeah, I think it's good. So now you'll notice I've got tempo set to variable and you can see the tempo right now is 105. If we watch this, we'll notice that the tempo changes about every bar because we have the set to tempo variable. We could set this to tempo constant, but there's not a great reason to. They may or may not have recorded to a click, so their tempo might not be consistent. Logic does a pretty good job of figuring out what the tempo was. So we can leave this at variable for right now. And now we're going to apply the project tempo to the region and downbeat. So it's analyzed the just the click track, but it's going to apply this to all the things that we have selected. So if I click that, it does a little magic, close this, and now we can pay attention to the tempo up here, and we're going to hear at 120 what the song would sound like. Way too fast, but it's on the beat. So I can easily then set the tempo here to 105. So I got a few more things I want to do to this. First thing we're going to do is we're going to save this. And I like to keep everything in a package. So this file itself, this logic file itself, will contain the audio tracks that we drug in there. Next thing we're going to do is make a proper click track. I'm just going to borrow some MIDI data from a previous track. Just selecting that, hit Command C, and done with this project. And I'm going to make a new software instrument here and paste that in the beginning. And I'm going to call this click. I like to use orchestral percussion orchestral kit. But I want to turn off the delay and the reverbs that it puts on that. A little bit about my choices with the click. So if we listen to the click here, there's just two things happening there. There's a clave and a wood block. I chose those sounds because when you got 10 people playing their guts out, screaming at the top of their lungs, you need to be able to hear these in your ear and pick them out of the mix. So the pitch of those instruments and the sharpness of the tack is good enough to be able to hear in the midst of a very loud section of music. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a few instructions to the band in here. So I'm going to make a new track here, audio and I'm gonna record this off the input of the mic I'm speaking in right now. And I'm gonna call this talk back. Arm it for recording. Actually, before I start that, I want to align things a little bit. So the song actually starts at, at bar one. I need to give some instructions and a countdown so I'm going to have the click start at bar zero and the song itself actually start at bar one. So I'm going to slide this over two bars. That should give me enough time to, to announce the song and to count it in. Valerie drums in one, two, three, four. That's about it. And it might be even a little more clear if that click didn't go over top of the name. So I'll slide the click over a bar. Let's listen to that, how that starts. Valerie drums in one, two, three, four. 
And let's give the singers a good cue that they're about to start singing. Even cueing the first line of the verse is a good idea. Sometimes I go out by myself. Let's find out where that starts. Verse one, sometimes I go out by myself. Like that. Let's see where else we might want to put in some cues. I don't like to overdo it with the talk back. I feel like once you've started a verse, you know intuitively where the pre-chorus and the chorus is going to come in. So I'm just going to prep them with the second verse words, did you have to go to jail? Second verse, did you have to go to jail? Like that. One thing I do like to do is also putting in markers so I can find sections of the song easier later. Also, a fun fact, you set markers in these you can see those markers in main stage later, and you get the idea. So I'm going to speed things up and just show you putting in markers, adding talkback cues to the various sections that need it. Okay, when verse 3 starts, which is just verse 1 again, the other instruments drop out. So we're going to give the band a little cue that that's happening. you got to find a good place to put the talkback because people aren't going to be able to hear it while they're singing. Just bass. Sometimes I go out by myself. And now we're going to tell the rest of the rhythm section to come back in. Add the rest of the rhythm. And let's tell the band that the chorus repeats. Repeat the chorus. And we're going to tell them it's ending here. The band will understand intuitively the four or eight bar phrases. So I just need to say that somewhere in the eight bars so that they know that we're about to end the song with a slight retard. Ending here. And that's it. And I can shorten the click track to the end of that and bring in the length of the timeline. Save it. And we're ready to bounce it out to our tracks. And I also, because of how things lined up, I actually need to drag in the start of it too. I need to tell it that we're actually not starting till bar zero. Valerie drums in one, two, three, four. Yeah, cool. All right, so we're ready to bounce. Uh, first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna just take the click track and hit Command B to bounce. I'm gonna bounce it out to a PCM file which is a WAV file. A couple options on there, but... Now, the reason I use a WAV file, not an MP3, is that a WAV file will contain the tempo information and the markers from the set. So when we drag this into main stage, it will contain that information. I'll show you why that's valuable. And I put it in here, and I kind of call this Valerie Click. Bounce it. Okay, and then we do the same thing for the talkback. Bounce it. Valerie. Talk back. And then the tracks. Not the demo, the backing track. Bounce that. Valerie. Tracks. And we're done with logic. Let's hop over to main stage. All right, our band has a repertoire of about 170 songs. And I create a set for each song because I need to be able to assign a tempo and maybe have multiple patches for each song. I'm going to walk you through the process of creating a new one. So I'm going to make a new set. And I'm going to call this Valerie. And I'm going to drag it up to the top. Now, I play piano on this tune, so I'm going to steal it from something else. I'm going to steal this patch from here. Command-C on that, and Command-V into here. Okay. These little arrows up here indicate that I'm not 
recreating a new version of those instruments here in this patch, so it's not taking up more memory. It's referencing a previous patch, which I've got one called Masters down at the bottom, which hold the patches that I use in multiple places. Okay, so now let's go back to the set level, and we're going to drag in the three files that we just bounced from Logic, which are in here. So I've got Valerie, and I can just grab all three of these at once, drag them into main stage, and I'm going to put them right over here so that little line appears to the left of my channel strips. That's going to make three channel strips with a playback plugin. And by doing it all at once, it actually links the playbacks together, which is important because we want them to play at the same time. So that puts them all in the same group. So now with this playback, I'm going to say, yes, we're going to sync to Logic's tempo. Go ahead and snap to the bar, and we're playing from the start. And I'm going to do that for each of these. Now, the reason I put these in the set level, I could have added them as channel strips to this patch. But sometimes I've got songs that have multiple patches. I need the tracks to keep playing even if I change patches, which is why I put those playback strips on the set level. Uh, the last thing I need to do is I need to attach my play button to trigger the start of the tracks. So I click that. And it doesn't matter which of these I choose. I just choose one of my playback engines. Go to playback, transport, uh, play stop from start. So now, so I've got my keyboard set up. If I hit the play button, you'll hear, oh the, oh, the last thing I need to do here is I need to send these down the right bus. It kind of picks an output for you when you drag them in here. I've got distinct outputs because some of the stuff the band needs to hear, some of the stuff the front of house sound needs to hear. So I've got different buses for those. So in this, in this case, the tracks need to go down the tracks bus. The talkback needs to go down the talkback bus. And the click needs to go down the click bus. So I'll do a future video on how our band digital mixer works how everyone has access to mix their own sound so those are each distinct tracks that they would be able to mix you know in addition to the keyboard and everything else so some people like the click pretty loud like the drummer uh, some people want the talk back pretty loud so they've got complete control over that i just need to make sure we're sending it down the right bus so now if i hit play we should be able to hear and we'll see these meters move here um, corresponding to the different Things that are going on. Valerie drums in one, two, three, four. That was a strange talk back. Uh, it's strange sounding because the tempo is pretty slow. We haven't set our tempo yet. Let's see what the tempo of this right now is at 88. Um, must have been my default concert level tempo. So if I change this to 105 here, it should sound correct. I'm going to hit play on my keyboard. Valerie drums in one, two, three, four. Yeah, so that's good. We see the click is centered in the right channel. Verse one, sometimes I right go channel. out by myself. Cool. Now, later, if the band wanted to do the song at a different tempo, let's say 110, I just adjust it here. Valerie drums in one, two, three, four. First one, sometimes I go, yeah, and everything gets adjusted to that new tempo. So if you want to see more about how to design your main stage layout to attach buttons and draw bars and things like that, um, check out my video about musical theater. I go to that, I go through that in pretty deep process. But thanks for watching, and hopefully it won't be nine years before I post another video on YouTube about main stage. It's great software for 30 bucks, and I love it. Feel free to post comments down below. Subscribe to the channel. Hopefully, I'll post some new stuff someday.